resistance! This is resistance! This is resistance! Keep going, 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 keep going. Big question is this is driver? Karen has been the hottest search term recently because of her crazy actions and irrational thinking. Let's sit back, relax, and watch the expensive punishments that these Karens have to pay. Let's move on to the first case when Karen got drunk at work and got the punishment she deserved. On February 20th, 2023, two Fort Myers Police Department officers responded to a report of a former employee who was intoxicated at a Chevrolet dealership. According to the manager, the employee had previously been a hard worker and dedicated to her job. At recently, she became intoxicated and began causing trouble with other employees. As her condition worsened, the company was forced to fire her and ask her to leave the premises. She immediately refused and remained at her desk. Okay, we're Indeed, during the investigation, the woman was identified as Naline, and from her first words, she appeared mentally unstable and slurred her speech due to the influence of alcohol. What's your name is? Melina Pierre. Melina? Melina. Okay. Yes. Do you have any idea why I'm here? No clue. No. Would you like yeah. to know what I'm here for? Well, I, I know what I'm here for. That might be your problem, actually. Uh -huh. That might be a business of yours. While the two police officers were talking to the boss, the employee immediately loudly demanded that the police provide her ID number so that she could contact a lawyer whom she and her boss confirmed was her father. She repeatedly refused to accept the police's instructions and repeatedly said that she had graduated from law school and would come back to ask the police. So, what's your title? I'm the owner. Okay, well, what's her title? She, she's a BDC. She works in the business. Yeah, department. I'm also in law school. If you want to take down my well, I don't want to talk to you, Josh. You just yeah, ignore yeah, me. Okay, so, so she was the administrator. Yeah, that's her desk. Oh, okay. I want your ID number with your first and last name, so I can talk to my you, lawyer. You're gonna get it. Yes, because I'm in law school. Okay. All right. So I have a par I'm, I'm a paralegal by profession. I'm a oh paralegal. yeah. Um, I did. I'm 20. Like what? A year ago. Okay. So what's your first and last name? Officer Cafroni from our C C C A C A F F. F -F R O and I. R O and I. My batch number is 616. Worse still, in order to avoid the police's instructions, she lied that she had called her mother and was on her way to pick her up, but her boss's words exposed her lie. That's that's tough. Okay, so let me let me just call my mom and let me just have her. You obviously are professional. Well, what's confirmed is that I need to have I need to have someone pick me up. So why are you making it like I am? I am. Okay, what 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 is your right? My, my partner doesn't speak Spanish. Okay. Oh, your partner doesn't speak Spanish. Yeah. Correct. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So you're gonna have to pick me up. Yeah. Okay. 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 Yeah. Okay.
The law refers to the case whoever commits such acts as are of a nature to corrupt the public morals or outrage the sense of public decency or affect the peace and quiet of persons who may witness them. And Nalan's actions violated this law and immediately resulted in her being charged with disorderly conduct or breach of peace, which is classified as a second degree misdemeanor punishable by up to 60 days in jail or six months probation and a $500 fine. And also in Florida Statutes Chapter 810 Section 08, Nalan's act of defiance and disobedience to the instructions of the owner of the workplace resulted in her facing punishment. Whoever, without being authorized, licensed, or invited, willfully enters or remains in any structure or conveyance, or having been authorized, licensed, or invited, is warned by the owner or lessee of the premises, or by a person authorized by the owner or lessee to depart and or lessee, to depart and refuses to do so, commits the offense of trespass in a structure or conveyance. She will face sentence as a second degree misdemeanor punishable by up to 60 days in jail. Resisting a peace officer as stated in Florida Statutes Chapter 843.02, this statute addresses the crime of resisting an officer with or without violence. The resisting with violence involves actively opposing or obstructing an officer using force, while resisting without violence refers to nonviolent obstruction. Another costly conviction forced Nalan to accept a first degree misdemeanor punishable by up to a year in jail or 12 months of probation and a $1,000 fine. Hey, well, fellas, just because of drinking, this woman had to accept a big stain on her future law school record. In next case, this teacher got drunk at school and faced instant karma. On November 7, 2023, the police received a report of a teacher drinking openly in the classroom at one school in Oklahoma. The female teacher was introduced as Jennifer Davis. From the very first questions, Jennifer complained about someone reporting her drinking at school and immediately denied that this had ever happened before. When the police arrived at the school, they were met with Miss Davis, who appeared calm but was visibly anxious about the situation. The police explained to her that they had received reports of her drinking at school and needed to investigate. Miss Davis was adamant that she had not consumed alcohol while on school grounds, asserting that any drinking had been done the night before. Hey, how are we all? How are we doing? Good. Can we clear the room? This is uh, Jennifer Davis. Hi, Hi Jennifer. Jennifer, how are you doing? You too. So, Hi. is this morning, and so she understands it, and she, and she said she'd be. The conversation between Miss Davis and us and the officers began with her denial of drinking at school. She mentioned that she had only had a glass of wine the previous night around 10.30 p.m. and had not consumed any alcohol since. The officers explained that they would need to conduct a series of tests to confirm her current state. The first step in the process was to perform a field sobriety test. Okay, this is what we call standardized field sobriety test. Uh -huh. Okay, uh, there's three of them. I'm going to pretty much focus on the first one, which is horizontal gaze and staticness. So I'm going to have you take your glasses off and I'm going to have you little stab up when we do the track. I am so blind without them, I can't hardly see. Can you see, see something like my finger about yes, six yes, inches from yes. your face? Okay. Yes. This is a standardized procedure used to assess a person's level of intoxication. The officer instructed Miss Davis to remove her glasses and follow a moving object with her eyes while keeping her head still. This test, known as the horizontal gaze nystagmus, helps detect signs of impairment. This test, known as the horizontal gaze nystagmus, helps detect signs of impairment. Following the field sobriety test, the officer introduced a portable breathalyzer machine. This device measures the amount of alcohol in a person's breath to determine if they are over the legal limit. Ms. Davis agreed to take the breathalyzer test, confident that her back would be below the limit. As Ms. Davis blew into the breathalyzer, the device registered a back of 0.06. This result was below the legal limit of 0.08, but it still indicated the presence of alcohol in her system. But this, again, would be your opportunity. If teachers here or administrators feel that they smell alcohol in this would be your opportunity. Sure. Yeah. Will you willing to take that test? Yes. Okay. I haven't had anything today. Okay. <laughs> and if that's the case, or if there's nothing on board? No. Because sometimes what you have is, well, if people have tied a really good one on the night before, it can carry over to the next as far as what? You said it can carry They really tie a good one on the night before, you know, yeah. alcohol can still be on board. Now, I can't give you any legal advice to take it or not to take it. I can do this off. Okay, what's going to happen is when this thing tells me it's time to blow, I'm going to have you reach over with your mouth, and blow into that as hard as you can until I okay. tell you to stop. Big deep breath, blow. Hard. Keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. Good. 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 
Did the officer explain that while she was under the legal limit, she was still considered to be intoxicated and her condition could still affect her performance, especially in a professional environment like a school? Despite being below the legal limit, the situation was complicated by the fact that Ms. Davis was at her workplace. The officers had to make a decision on how to proceed. Uh, they noted that according to the law, even a back below the legal limit could still result in a charge of public intoxication if it affected the person's behavior or job performance. The officers explained to Ms. Davis that although she was under the legal limit, she was still considered intoxicated. They informed her that she would be arrested for public intoxication, a charge that could carry legal consequences and impact her employment. Ms. Davis was offered the chance to have someone come pick her up from the school, which she agreed to. You know, our job is not to judge, it's just our job is to do our job, yeah. you know. So. Yeah. Do you have your ID with you? Is it your purse? Okay, Jennifer, I'm going to be honest with you. Uh, this is a portable breathalyzer machine. It reads a little lower than what the actual intoxilizer utilizes in the police department. This came up a point zero, a zero point zero six six. I have not had any, that's what I'm saying. I haven't had any. Well, again, I don't know your drinking habits, and if they run with a normal BAC of, say, about 0.06 or 0.08, that's what feels normal to me. I will have Listen, my sister get me. I don't write the law. And I, and I won't resign. I well, that, won't that's resign. Be, that, that's something you're going to discuss with the, the administration here? That I've made my decision. Okay. The arrest was not without its emotional weight. Miss Davis expressed frustration and disbelief at the situation, feeling that her reputation and career were being unfairly jeopardized. She requested to call her sister to arrange for her pickup, which the officers allowed. As they prepared her for transport, Miss Davis was informed that her case would be processed as a municipal charge and she would have to appear before a judge. I, I reasons behind that. I okay. understand made it clear that despite their discretion and the legal threshold, the school's zero tolerance policy meant that Miss Davis could no longer continue her role as a teacher. She was given the option to resign or face termination based on the outcome of the situation. What is my The arrest and subsequent legal process were handled with the intention of maintaining professionalism and confidentiality. However, in a small town where news travels quickly, it was inevitable that this incident would attract media attention. The local community parents and students would be informed and Miss Davis' employment status would be reviewed in light of the events. As Miss Davis faced the judicial process, the situation highlighted the complexities of handling public intoxication cases, especially in sensitive environments like schools. The balance between legal standards and professional conduct was scrutinized and the case became a point of discussion within the community and beyond. The incident served as a reminder of the high standards expected from educators and the careful considerations required when allegations of intoxication arise. In the Oklahoma statutes, Title 632-104 prohibits the use of alcohol and drugs in the workplace and school environment. The specific content of this law can be summarized as follows. The law prohibits the use of alcohol or other stimulants in the workplace, including schools. And this applies to all employees, including teachers, to ensure a safe and effective working environment. This teacher's behavior of using alcohol caused her to violate the framework of the above law. If the behavior causes serious violations of the law, the teacher may face legal penalties, such as fines or imprisonment, depending on the severity of the behavior. Through both cases, it shows that alcohol has made these women pay the price. In the next case, we will witness a new level of resistance. Let's find out. On July 12, 2022, 
The Yonkers Police Department in New York received multiple reports of an incident involving a motorcycle riding recklessly on the sidewalk, causing chaos on Wall Street. After receiving a description from the reports, NYPD officers immediately arrived and stopped the motorcycle and questioned the owner before it could lead to more serious consequences. Initial preliminary checks revealed that the motorcycle did not have a license plate. When asked to show her motorcycle license, the woman repeatedly stated that she worked for DoorDash and that DoorDash had licensed her to use the motorcycle for her work at DoorDash. I'm yelling. I'm going to DoorDash. DoorDash? Yeah. yeah, I got my, what you call it, tight on that thing for the bike. You, you, need, a you need a license plate for it, Bounce. You use it. When the assistant police officer granted her permission to use the motorcycle on the street, she immediately refused and quickly became silent when the police officer asked to register the license in New York State. I'm picking up a delivery right now. Yeah, I'm picking up a delivery right now. Yeah, I'm picking up a delivery right now. Yeah, I'm picking up a delivery Despite being asked to show her driver's license several times, the woman continued to make excuses to avoid the investigation. The interrogation revealed that the driver did not have a driver's license and that the vehicle belonged to the woman who was with her. The driver remained uncooperative, constantly looking at her phone to find what she thought was a motorcycle license. Seeing that her excuse was not accepted, the driver immediately took the vehicle and fled. Her resistance immediately put her in a passive position. She was restrained by the police for refusing to cooperate during the interrogation. I was driving too. Yeah, she was so driving. She was driving. Right no, she was driving. Maybe yeah, she was a license driver. driver. Yeah. I'm getting away. Yeah. Stop fighting! I'm trying to take my fight. I'm trying to take my fight. Come on, I'm doing it. Yeah, I'm not I'm just doing it. While being handcuffed, the driver kept shouting, cursing, and demanding to call her uncle. She kept shouting that her uncle was the police chief and the police would pay a heavy price. Oh, I'm not talking to you. Yo, it's crazy. Yo, do it. I'm so slick. You make it slick. Just don't fight fast. You don't want that. You got to back away. Thank you. Thank you. Ha, you did this. That's so hard. Yeah, you got to find it. Yeah, I'm so hard. The driver's stubbornness in wanting to return to work without a driver's license and running away during the interrogation. This crazy behavior led to serious charges and increased the possibility of her going to jail. The woman was charged with reckless driving, resisting arrest, and multiple citations. Under section 1212 of the section 1212 of the New York Vehicle and Traffic Code, you can be charged with reckless driving if you drive in a manner that unreasonably interferes with the free and proper use of a public roadway or drive in a manner that unreasonably endangers the free and proper use of a public roadway. The woman's multiple attempts to operate a vehicle without a license fall within this category. She faces up to 180 days in jail and a fine of up to $1,125 for each subsequent offense. As for flight during an investigation, it is considered illegal for a suspect to flee, threaten, assault, or provide a false ID to a police officer while being arrested. The woman was convicted of resisting arrest under Chapter 205, Section 03, Class A. This resulted in her being sentenced to a maximum of 364 days in jail and a fine of up to $1,000. What a well-deserved for the rebellious Karen who considers the law normal. That's the last part. The behavior of those women is crazy, right? Share your thoughts in the comment section below and don't forget to like and subscribe to be the first to receive interesting news. Thanks for all your support.